Hey guys, it's Agonsi Timur again and welcome back to my channel. So today I'm pretty excited because I'm bringing you a new video where I'm doing a prototype of eating food in augmented reality. You can see from the video that is playing behind me that I'm basically detecting a collision between my mouth and the food that I'm eating. I am going to show you how I capture when my mouth is open, how I actually implemented the entire prototype, and then by the end of this video you should be able to do the same. So let's jump into Unity and start working on it. All right guys, so let me show you two of the demos that I built before we jump into the code. Just gonna show you the both experiences. So the one on the left is showing when my mouth is open. You can see by the numbers here, those are the floats that I get from the face tracker. I also have a sphere around my mouth and that's the one that I'm using to detect collisions. So I'm using two parameters. One of them is going to be the one that I get from AirKit when my mouth is open and then the other one it's the collision itself so that's how the experience works so let's jump into and look at some of the code so on the previous video if you didn't watch it i would recommend that you watch it i go through how to configure face tracking in less than 10 minutes and that's what i'm not going to go through here because i think that video covers that but i'm going to show you the components so in this video i have just like i always do an ar session an ar session origin this one has the AR face manager, just like I showed you in the previous video. And I have a maximum face cam because this prototype, this game, is only for one face. And I call it the donut eater, but it's actually food eater. So if you see that name, I'm going to be changing it when I submit it to GitHub. So the other thing that I have also, if you double click on the on this mesh, I have a mesh that has a AR face. It also has a AR face mesh visualizer. And this is just based on that previous video. I also have a blend shape tracker. This is the one that does most of the work. This is the component that gets the information from ARKit. It gets a value which is called the coefficient. In that coefficient value, it goes from zero to one. If it's one, that means that the blend shape is basically has been, is at its mats. And if it's zero, that means that we haven't really, you know, in my case, I'm detecting jaw open. So if my jaw is not open, it's gonna be zero. If my jaw is all the way open, it's going to be one. And I'm gonna put a, a link for you so that you can look at what that looks like from the documentation from Apple. So now that we have these, I'm gonna show you the other components that I also have. So in here I also have a sphere, and let me just go ahead and toggle the gizmos and the also the mesh render. So this is a, a sphere that I'm using for the collision. I have a box collider, which has a is trigger component check. And I also have a rigid body because I'm detecting collision. I have it set to kinematic because in this case, the face is the one that is going to be moving this object, not the not physics itself. So make sure that you set that to kinematic. And then I have, you know, a material that I use for debugging. So if you go back to the video, specifically the first video, let me just go ahead and find that in my desktop. And at some point you're gonna be able to see like right here, there's a sphere. So that's a sphere that I'm looking at it right now. So I use it for debugging purposes. If I need to make the collider bigger, then you can make the collider bigger. And then that way you can see what's happening. You can see that the collider in this case is just a little block collider. I started with the sphere, but it didn't look realistic because what was happening is if you look at the, if we look at the video, the, the mouth goes all the way around, but I didn't want to cover the entire mouth and it makes, for me, it was just more realistic if I made it a little bit smaller than that. And that actually works really well. So that's what I decided to use a box collider instead of a sphere collider. And then also it's trigger on it and just a simple material that has some transparency, as you can see here. And what I do is if I want to release this, you know, if you want to release this as a game, just, just uncheck the mesh render and then that sphere won't show. Or if you want to implement something like, you know, debugging on, enable it, and then when it's not, on then you can disable it so that's what that component is let me go ahead and jump into the the one that is doing most of the work and it's actually a little code i i actually feel bad that it's so easy it's 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 actually way easier than i thought it was going to be so in this one i have a collision area and this is the this is actually the game object that i just show you this one right here it's associated with that i call it the mouth and that's the one that comes from the hierarchy i also have an offset because i'm using the position of the head to determine, uh, you know, how much to offset the the sphere. So if I were, if if I don't have an offset, what's going to happen? It, it was going to be around my neck inside of the pivot point in my neck. So that wasn't really on my mouth. So I have an offset to basically push that forward. 
that way I know, okay, that's where my mouth is going to be. And, and I'll show you that code in just a second. And then if you want to use different blank shapes, I mean, this implementation only works with one. But if you want to have, you know, if you want to detect something different, you can also do, you know, when your mouth is closed, do something else. Or you have a lot of different, you know, blank shapes in here, values that you can use to detect different expressions. And in this case, I just want to do it when my jaw is open because that's when I'm going to be eating. And then I have a dictionary because I wanted to cache this information in in a dictionary just so, just so that I know which values I need to capture. I'm going to show you how that works. I'm using I'm also using the ARK ARKit face up system. I can't even talk today. And then I'm also getting a component, the AR face component. And I have this public property that I use to tell the the other components when this coefficient, what the value of the coefficient is. On the awake method, I get a reference to the face. I get my dictionary initialized. And I set, this is really important to do because if you don't set this, uh, we're gonna have to be tracking mo more blank shapes than we need to. In my case, the only one that I really want to track is going to be the job. And so that's why I initialized the dictionary to this. And I'm gonna show you how I implemented that. Then on enable, I get the, I get the face manager. I also check, okay, if the face manager is not null, I get the ARK face up system. And then I just, you know, I just bind to the updated method here that whenever the face is updated, the unupdated method is going to be called. I also, it's really important to, to make sure that you remove those listeners. So on disable is removing the listener from the face that updated. And then the unupdated method just takes in an AR face update event arcs. I pass in the variable and then I call the most important method of this class, which is called the update face features. And then here is where I do the offset that is really important. And what I'm doing here is I'm saying, okay, collision area, this is the sphere that I just show you. Uh, grab the position of it and then offset it by, you know, by the position, but then subtract the, colli the collision area offset. So that way it's touching my mouth. And that way I know that if that, if the collision happens within those boundaries, then I know that I can detect whether the, whether my jaw is open or not. So on the update, face features, I am doing, I am calling the face up system and that's why I was getting a reference from the on enable. I call the gain the get blend shape coefficients. I pass in the face that trackable ID and also an allocator that temp. Then what I do is once I have the blend shapes, I go and do a for each. And this for each is, is really important that you, because I was going to do an if statement and in, in this case, this works better because what's going to happen is this, the cache blend shapes a dictionary. And the only time that we're going to get into here is when we're tracking, is when the face of system tells me that my mouth, my jaw is open. So if my jaw is open, what's going to happen is we're going to get into this if statement. I'm going to set the property that I showed you above, which is the coefficient. And then I'm just getting the coefficient value from the dictionary. In this case, this is going to be, so the first time that we go around, this is going to be zero. This is really not needed, to be honest, but I'm just going to set it anyways, because the next time around, we're going to be able to get that property. I'm also using a logger implementation that I created. And I'm going to show you that as well. And then what I do here on the cache blend shapes, I get the feature coefficient, the blend shape location. So this is going to give me the jaw open, you know, key in the dictionary. And then I'm going to set it to the value of the feature coefficient, coefficient value, which is going to be a float value. So that's everything here as far as that goes. Then a couple of more components that I have as well is when the foot is falling, I am using this movement and all I'm doing in here is I'm just setting up a speed variable. I also have destroy after dead. So this means, you know, after one second, I'm going to be destroying the foot. And then I just determine whether the foot has been in or, or not. Then the movement that, that's happening that you have seen is basically happening on the update. I just grab the transform the position and I just basically add the speed times the times the delta time. So most of the work happens on the on the blend shape tracker, but this is very important as well because what's happening here is the 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 foot itself is saying, okay, you know what, if I'm colliding with the mouth and the blend shape tracker instance coefficient is greater than 0 0.5, then I'm gonna say that I can be eating. So as long as I haven't been eating, I'm gonna set myself to be eating then I'm going to be incrementing this, the score and then I'm gonna destroy myself after one second. So that's that's how most of, most of this work. Okay, the other object that I also have is a scale. So this scale is responsible for scaling the objects. The, in our case, it's gonna be the food as the food is falling. 
Then the next one is going to be the spanner. This is a very simple implementation of spanning the, the food. I have the prefab that I want to be spun. I want I have the, you know, what the minimum seconds is and the maximum seconds are for when spawning the food. So this allows me to control, to make it more dynamic. So if I want to spawn food, you know, every second that I could set this two to one and one. If I wanted to spawn food between three and five seconds, I could say three, you know, to five, because I'm using a range here to generate a number between the minimum and also the, ma the maximum number. Then the other things that I also have in here is, you know, I want to detect when to destroy, when to destroy these objects. And, and in fact, I thought I was going to, I thought I was going to do these on the, on the foot itself. Let me look and see how, okay. So I know, I know where, where I'm messing up. So the spanner is the one that is responsible for spawning the objects, but I'm destroying them in a certain amount of time. The movement is getting destroyed when I'm eating those objects. So that's why I have a destroy here and also another, you know, another destroy here. And I just have a timer here that says if I, you know, if, I, if, if the spawn, spawn timer is reaching the max, then I'm going to instantiate a new object and then I'm going to tell it to destroy in the, in this amount of seconds, I reset the timer and then I get the new generated second so that we can keep it more, you know, dynamic. And that's honestly everything in that area. Let's go ahead and go back into, let's go back into Unity. And I show you the demo already running, but I think I can show you as long as the AR key doesn't, doesn't blow up. Yeah. So if you can see that the food is falling down and let's go ahead and look at the components here that I have. So I have three components and I, you know, this is a prototype. That's why I wanted to make it very, very simple. And if we look at the components, which is really hard to see, let's see if I can. So we can, we can just go ahead and do that. Let's go ahead and add a sphere here. This is going to be, uh, we can just call it location and I'll just add two more. That way you guys know when I check in this code where the locations are for these spanners. And then I'll just set everything here to zero, zero, zero. There we go. So that's where they are located. And that's why the food is falling in those areas. So I'm going to, let me go ahead and resize this. And we can probably make it 2.4, 0 0.4, 0.4. And the reason why I'm getting, oh, I see why I'm getting. I'm going to change the, let's see, the scale on this object doesn't really matter. And, but I'm going to set it, I'm going to set it to be all equal. And there we go. So now, now that's more clean. So what's going to happen is the food is going to fall from those places. So if we go ahead and play this, I'm going to show you how, how that works. And you can see how they are falling from those. So the scale is the one that is getting the, you know, that is making that effect. This one is actually scaling a little bit. The hamburgers are also is scaling a little bit. And I could also go into, if you look at the spanner and you can see that I have, you know, I, I have a span, a span in mean seconds and also max seconds. I could also add speed if I wanted to. And I think in this case is, is fine. The speed I am controlling right now through the, through the objects themselves. So if we go into prefab, go into food and you look at the burger, each one of them is controlling its own speed. And I think I need to change this because it makes more sense to have the speed on the, on the other area. So I will change that in just, you know, probably by the next video. But that's everything that I wanted to show you guys. If you guys have any questions and if you're curious about when I'm going to be posting this, I'll be posting this in Patreon and I probably will make it available to Patreon, you know, right away. But then in a week, it'll be available to everybody else. So if you guys want to check it out, make sure you check it out at patreon.com and then Dilmer V, it's going to be my username. Thank you guys. All right, guys, thank you much for watching this video today. I really appreciate your time. And if you have any questions about anything that I just mentioned, please let me know in the comments. Also, be sure to check out gamedev.net because they have great resources for game developers. And also find me in patreon.com where I'm basically posting what I'm doing behind the scenes and also early access source code. Thank you very much, guys.